We're almost done, class. We are now down to the the wire here. We, we're going to be doing the muscles that move the ankles or the toes. Uh, so we're almost done. I know this is a lot of muscles, but hang in there. We can do it. So we are going to start with um, the muscles that cause dorsiflexion. So go ahead and do dorsiflexion. Remember that is bringing your foot up towards your shin. So bringing your foot up towards your shin, shin, that is dorsiflexion. So the dorsum of the foot is coming up towards um, your, your lower leg. That is dorsiflexion. So these muscles are going to be anterior muscles. They're going to bring in, be bringing this foot up in this direction. So the first thing you have to do on either the model or the cadaver is find your tibia. Your thick inner bone. So the tibia is the medial bone. Remember we said there were no muscles on top of the tibia. That's why you can feel the tibia. Your shin, you can feel it through your skin. So right next to the tibia, on the lateral side of the tibia, is going to be your first muscle. Let me go ahead and get both of them selected so you can see them on both sides. Find your tibia. Just lateral to the tibia is going to be tibialis anterior. Tibialis anterior. So far, so good. Right next to the tibia, and it's in the anterior part of the leg. Now the next muscle, just lateral to the tibialis anterior, and kind of find it up here, because you'll kind of get lost if you start looking down here. So tibialis anterior, then you're going to go extensor digitorum longus. Extensor digitorum longus. So this is a long muscle, and if you can see, it's going into the digits. It's extending out your digits also. So it's causing um, dorsiflexion, but it's also causing extension of your digits, of your, of your toes, the four toes here. And just there's going to be a muscle that's running deep to extensor digitorum longus. And the other thing, don't get confused. Where have you heard extensor digitorum before? In, in the hand, right? We got, in our forearm, we got the extensor digitorum. But that is extensor, extensor digitorum. Everything in the leg is going to have either a longus or a brevis after it, except for the tibialis anterior and there's going to be a tibialis posterior too. But everything else is going to have is either going to be longus or brevis. So just keep that in mind. If you this is extensor digitorum longus. Now this guy next next to it is going to be extensor hallucis longus. This is going to the hallux, the great toe, the big toe. I'm actually going to isolate this one out so you can see it. Extensor hallucis longus. This is kind of deep to the extensor digitorum longus. You can see it peeking through here, but it, it and it is going to the great toe. So always look to see where it is going and it'll tell you its name. Extensor hallucis longus. This one, extensor. It, what's it extending? The digits of the t of the foot, it's the toes, the four toes. Extensor digitorum longus. And then this guy, right next to the tibia, tibialis anterior. So those are your dorsiflexors. Now let's go to the plantar flexors. Woo! Plantar flexors. Now if you stand on your tippy toes, you are going to be plantar flexing. So stand on your tippy toes 
and you can feel all these muscles in the back bulge out. And actually, you're going to be feeling some of these lateral muscles bulge out too. So you can, if you stand on your tippy toes now, you're going to feel these back muscles and these lateral muscles contracting. But the big bulky muscles, when we think of your calf muscles, you have a gastrocnemius, you have a left head and a right head. They are the big bulky muscles in the back. Let's go ahead and put them both together. Gastrocnemius, right and left heads. Huge, huge muscle. And in fact, if you Google um, gastrocnemius implants, you will see that this is basically one of the number one areas that men are getting implants put in. They can be all buffed up on the top, but for some reason, these muscles are hard to, to, to buff up. So you'll see men getting implants. They don't want to have a big buffed up body um, and then have these tiny little calf muscles. So calf muscle implants, um, that's, those are real common, real common surgery. And these calf muscles, the gastrocnemius, look where they're inserting. They are inserting in the Achilles tendon. The Achilles tendon and calcaneus tendon. Let's see. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's move this guy up. Here's the Achilles tendon or the calcaneus tendon. They are inserting into the Remember the calcaneus, the, the heel bone? That is where they insert inserting. So the gastrocnemius has two heads, a left and a right head, and they are inserting into the Achilles tendon, and that Achilles tendon is going into the calcaneus. Common injury, this is um, Achilles tendon is really... You see a lot of sports injuries with the Achilles tendon. Um, I've seen a Marine that came in, his Achilles tendon actually ruptured off of the calcaneus, and his whole gastrocnemius was just up in a ball spazzing. Mm, very painful. So don't want to have that happen. So there's the gastrocnemius inserting into the Achilles tendon, or the calcaneus tendon, into the calcaneal, calcaneous bone. So let's go ahead and hide those guys and deep, deep to the gastrocnemius is going to be your soleus. Oops, I didn't want to hide him. So deep to the gastrocnemius is going to be the soleus. Another powerful muscle that's helping. It's a synergist um, to the gastrocnemius for um, plantar flexion. And it is also inserting into the calcaneus by the um, Achilles tendon. So this, oh, geez, sorry, getting late at night. And you'll see this. This is real, real easy to see on the cadaver real easy to see on the cadaver. So gastrocnemius and soleus. Now if we go deep to the soleus, let's get rid of the soleus, now we're getting into the deep muscles of the leg. So we'll be looking at these on our leg model um, probably not so much on the cadaver. These are probably harder to see on the cadaver. So let's see what do we have here. So first muscle that is going to be up in here that's on your list is the popliteus. The popliteus is in the popliteal fossa. Remember the popliteal um, area is behind the knee. So this is the popliteus and the popliteal fossa. 
and basically this muscle just kind of um, unlocks the knee after you've been standing a long time it just kind of relaxes it so it unlocks that knee just know that that's the popliteus and the popliteal fossa but let's look at the other muscles of dorsiflexion here's the tibialis posterior now the tibialis posterior is going to be you're going to see one muscle running right down the middle and you're going to see muscles on either side of it so the muscle right in the middle is the tibialis posterior if you isolate it there is the tibialis posterior so let's go back and then on either side of it you're going to have the flexor hallucis longus now this muscle especially on your model you go well um, the great toe is on this side so why why is this muscle the flexor hallucis longus and not this muscle this is the flexor digitorum longus well if you follow the tendon you're going to see this tendon is going into the digits this tendon is going into the digits it's crossing under the medial malleolus and going into the digits of the foot so this one this one is the flexor digitorum longus going to the digits this the one in the middle is the tibialis posterior and then next to it is the flexor hallucis longus if you see this you see it's going to the great toe so just when you're looking at this kind of look at it on their model remember the muscle that you would think would be going to the great toe isn't it's going to the digits the other one is that you think would be going to the digits is going to the great toe so those are the posterior muscles and then we're going to be coming over next to the flexor hallucis longus we are going to have the fibularis longus fibularis it's on the fibula side the lateral side fibularis longus and then deep to fibularis longus is fibularis brevis fibularis longus fibularis brevis so if you look at the muscles from the front tibialis anterior extensor digitorum longus so once you find extensor digitorum longus then you're going to the lateral muscles fibularis longus just deep to fibularis longus is fibularis brevis now these muscles you're probably going to have to take time with um, when you're looking at them on the model we'll try to find these front and lateral muscles for sure on the cadaver um, the gastrocnemius and soleus real easy to see on the cadaver too these deeper muscles probably only see them on the classroom leg model I'll check to see if the cadaver has any good ones so those are going to be the anterior muscles then are doing your dorsiflexion the posterior and lateral muscles and lateral muscles are doing plantar flexion so stand on your tippy toes you can feel these back muscles and the lateral muscles um, getting you up on your tippy toes okay so now we are going to be doing the last last thing yip 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 yee we are going to be doing um, ankle inversion and eversion and I'm only showing you the minimal muscles you need to know there are more muscles than I'm sh than I'm showing you that do these actions so for inversion most ankle in injuries are going to be an inversion injury remember an inversion injury your ankle is turning 
um, out so your foot is pointing in. So the two muscles that do that are going to be, and I'm going to highlight them. Remember the next the, the muscle next to your tibia is tibialis anterior. And we're going to find its counterpart in the back, tibialis posterior. And then oh, let me, let me multi-select them so they both stay on. Um, so look at where they're inserting. They are both inserting down here by the, the big toe, the base of the big toe. So what that's going to give you is if they're both contracting, they're both pulling this, this part of the big toe upwards in, in this direction, in this direction, pulling it up in this direction. So that's going to give you foot inversion. I'll show you this in class if you can just think of putting a string that's by you at the base of your big toe and you're pulling the string up towards um, your knee, towards your knee on the, the lateral side of your knee. If you just picture that pulling up like that, it's going to be inverting that ankle. So those are the only two foot inversion muscles you need to know, tibialis anterior and its counterpart in the back, tibialis posterior. So now the last thing we have to do is, is foot eversion. Just make sure you know what foot e um, eversion is. And if you evert your ankle, uh, look at a, a diagram. I'll show, it, uh, show you in class if you don't remember. Remember foot in, inversion, the sole of the foot is pointing in. In foot eversion, the sole of the foot is pointing outward. So those are going to be your lateral muscles. So remember how we find our lateral muscles? We have tibialis, we have um, tibialis anterior. Next to tibialis anterior is the extensor digitorum longus. And then next to extensor digitorum longus is going to be fibularis longus. And just deep to fibularis longus is going to be fibularis brevis. Let's get both of those on. This one and this one. Why doesn't it stay on? There. So these, these are both inserting on the lateral side of the foot right here, the base of the fifth um, digit. So when it contracts, it's going to be pulling the foot in this direction, going up in this direction. So that is going to be giving you eversion, eversion going in this direction. When you're looking at these muscles, just kind of, you know, make sure you can understand the movement. Um, do foot eversion yourself. If you don't remember what it is, look it up on the website somewhere. I have pictures that are of it on the um, my PowerPoint, but you can Google it too. Foot eversion, the lateral muscles. So that's it. I think we've done them all. Um, that's it. So happy studying, and we'll see you in class.